how fitting it is that we should be discussing one of the mothers of this great species on Mother's Day. She is a matriarch and to tell us a lot more about just who Echo was is Patrick Omondi, who is the Head of Species Conservation and Management at the Kenya Wildlife Service. Welcome to the studio, Patrick. Now, that was a very emotional feature, yeah. I understand, especially for you, because you've done quite a lot of work in Amboseli, and you did meet Echo. Yeah. Some messages posted on an animal blog site after the news of Echo's death went out say that she was a daily presence, almost a companion to all of us. She gave us joy and filled us with wonder. Tell us about Echo. Yes, Echo is uh, one of our oldest matriarch in the country. Uh, she died at the age of 64 years, and I think she was able to survive the, the intensity of poaching that we had in the 70s and 80s that saw our elephant come down from as high as 167,000 individuals to 16,000 just because of poaching for ivory. And um, the elephants are very intelligent animals. They live in very closely knit family units, just like in human beings. Um, unlike human beings, they are led by females. They are not led by males. So the echo was ahead of a family, ahead of family for the last many years, and it's left many generations. So ahead of family gives direction. And I think one of the things that we should be celebrating that she was able to see those many generations, see sisters, see daughters, and see grandchildren. And um, because his died a natural death is something that us as Kenyans should be proud of because um, many of our elephants currently are being hit by poachers and mm -hmm. some die out of human elephant conflict. So to me, as much as we've lost Heto, it is our happiness at Kenya Wildlife Service that is died naturally and is left a generation of elephants that will probably be able to be seen still roaming within the Amboseli ecosystem. I think it's going to take over her footsteps as matriarch of the family. Will it be Enid, her sister? No, Enid is her daughter. Yes, Enid is a 28-year-old daughter. Yes, and or we have Ella, Ella, the, the sister. sister. Right. I think what has happened since the death is that the, because of the lack of leadership, the family has already split into six different groups. Has it? Yeah, and um, it is the possibility of uh, any taking over the 28-year-old 20, is being monitored or Ella can easily take it over. But over the years, and uh, one thing about Amboseli elephants is that it's one of the well-studied elephants in the world. Each of the 1,500 elephants are known by name. And this research has been going on for the last 35 years. Uh, courtesy of the Moseli Elephant Research Program, and they are close liaison with them at the, at the Kenya Wildlife Service. So we know each, of, each and every one of them, and as we speak, we are trying to monitor very closely. They will split because the leader is gone, but uh, shortly they will again come together, and the leader will just emerge. It is either going to be the 28-year-old daughter or uh, the sister, the 40-year-old Ella. And uh, the scientists are already on the ground and closely now monitoring this family. And uh, the good thing again, they're all inside the park, mm -hmm. which has the, 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 a lot of protection and uh, a lot of, uh, of this will be recorded. And uh, we should be telling Kenyans who has taken over. And uh, <laughs> we invite the Kenyans also to go and see yes. this unique elephant population in the country. It's one of those studied elephants you should be able to know we have an echo there. We have them numbered from A to Z. And uh, we are talking about 1,500 individuals wow. out of the 30,000 30, elephants in the country. Mm. Yes. And since uh, elephants supposedly have a very good memory, then it shouldn't be very difficult for the six units to come back together once they establish who the new leader is going to be. Yes, it won't be difficult. I think uh, it also happens during very intense droughts. Mm -hmm. They split into smaller units just as a strategy so that each and every one of them get enough brows to eat. But again, they get together. It's a close knit, just like you can't forget your brother, you can't forget your grandmother. Elephants have also that intelligence and that memory. 
to recognize that family. They live like human live. And I think these are some of the special animals that uh, we have in this country and are uh, blessed to us. No, this is, this is really amazing. Yes. And uh, one thing that disturbs me, frankly, is how much interest the West and what, let me say foreigners have put into our wildlife compared to how much interest we put into it. For example, a 13-part Animal Planet series uh, on the Amboseli elephants is set to air in Australia, India, Brazil, even Taiwan from as early as this coming week. Why is it that Kenyans don't take such pride in what we have, what is ours? I think there's something that the Kenya Wildlife Service has recognized that um, I think uh, Kenyans, we do not recognize that we have a gift, a godly given gift. This is nature and uh, we, we are proud to be having lots of different species in this country. Mm -hmm. Some of them are only found in Kenya and we spend lots of time outside the, the, the outside in, uh, in, 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 in social places. And so very few Kenyans have made an attempt to visit Kenya. We, we try to make sure that um, Kenyans recognize that we are having a very unique resource, a very rare resource. And um, for, for the elephants, we encourage for these particular uh, elephants that Kenyans make an attempt to visit Aboseli and see uh, well-known individuals mm -hmm. that live just like human beings live. And of course, under the Kenya Wildlife Service Elephant Program, you have done quite a lot of work with uh, Dr. Cynthia Moss, who is based in Amboseli itself. Now, um, how much more can other organizations do to take part in conservation of wildlife elephants and other wildlife as well in Kenya? Or can we perhaps do something like uh, what happens at the David Sheldrick Elephant Trust, where it's possible for you or me to adopt an elephant for up to a year by just paying a simple amount of money? Well, I think uh, uh, at Kenya Wildlife Service, we work closely with our partners, uh, Boseli Elephant Trust, through its leadership, where uh, Dr. Cynthia Moss is one of those partners. We also work closely with Daphne Cedric uh, for the Animal Orphanage at Nairobi National Park, and many other NGOs that actually work towards the management and conservation uh, of elephants in this country and many other endangered species. Well, I don't know what else it is that you want to hear. He has told you himself, be a proud Kenyan. Enjoy what it is that God has given you in this land. Now, uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time. However, we will be touching on the human-wildlife conflict and poaching next week Sunday at the same time. So please do keep it here. If you have any questions, do send them in to us. But for now, let me say, thank, you. thank you so much for thank taking you. the time to come and tell us more about ECHO. Let us remember ECHO on this Mother's Day. Thank you. <laughs>